All right, so I'm going to call on our first speaker tonight. Our first speaker tonight is um, Kathy Binkley. And I would just like to personally say a few other words to all the members here at Colonial Country Club for the past 37 and a half years. You have not only embraced my brother, but you have embraced the entire O'Brien family. You opened your doors and you opened your hearts as well. And for that, we will always be eternally grateful and appreciative. And Mike, to you, in your 43 years in the profession, I've always admired your dedication and your loyalty, your work ethic, and I think most importantly, your integrity. It's beyond measure in my eyes. You are the man that our parents and the son always dreamed that you would be. I have so much respect for you, for the husband that you are to Linda, the father that you are to Christian and Thomas, and the grandfather that you are to Jack, to Avery, and to Walker. You've been more than a brother to me because we lost our father when we were all in our 30s. And you have been my father figure. And I thank you so much for that. You've been the best brother a gal could ever have. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that you are my hero. And I love you so much. Good luck in your new journey. Thank you. Next, uh, I'd like to call on Thomas O'Brien. <laughs> Follow that, big boy. To Kathy's point, you know, you're beyond a hero to me. You're, you know, you're everything in so many ways for who I admire and who I would hope to be um, since I was a little kid. Um, but I know as far as, you know, the club and the things that you brought to this golf course and the junior program and the renovations and seeing this club really take shape from, you know, small clubhouse to a bigger clubhouse to different course renovations. I mean, I think you've had such a, a fingerprint on so many of the positive things that have happened in this club. And, uh, you know, I think everyone here would be remiss if they didn't, you know, pat you on the back and say thank you. You know, you've, you've done an incredible job here and you deserve every bit of accolade that you're going to get this evening. Um, I, I think it's easy for people to want to join this club once you meet my father. He's such a calm, warming presence. He's, you know, he's kind, he's gentle, he's got a quiet confidence about him, but he's willing to be, you know, so many different things, and he's such an incredible listener. You know, my dad is as good a listener as you will find anywhere. Um, you know, it goes back to so many things that he would tell me, you know, say, son, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Listen more and talk less. And I'm sure Rocky and Jay and... Countless others have heard that a time or two, uh, so it was always one that I've heard, and I still try to uh, emulate as much as I can. Um, but, uh, Dad, you've had so much pride in your profession. Um, you've given this club everything, I think, for 37 years. I don't think anybody could say that my dad hasn't given it his all. He sacrificed a ton, you know, and I, I would never get into many of the details, but, you know, there was a lot of rough nights, I know, growing up. I mean, it was hard. It was tough. Um, you know, for my mom to somewhat deal with those like long nights and long morning or, you know, early mornings and long nights and it wasn't easy. Um, so, you know, he sacrificed a ton and I think he's done it because he loves this place, he loves this membership and he loves Colonial. You know, he, he cares deeply about it and I think it's a testament to who he is as a person. Um, he's a incredibly loyal, he's caring um, and he obviously has so much pride. but. He loves all of you, and I know it, and I've seen it. But what I think he values more than anything is all the relationships that he's gained throughout this time that he's been here. That means more to him than anything else that could probably, you know, I could say. Um, it's just, it's all of you. You've made it all worthwhile to him, and that's why he's devoted, I think, the better part of his life to this, to this club. Um, um, you know, Dad, I, I think you're a pro's pro. You know, I think every pro that ever walks that I've ever come in contact, you know, they would love to emulate you and what you do. You've, 
I think you've carried yourself with such class and such dignity for so long that there's no one here that could say probably a bad thing about you. You know, maybe you're a little bit quiet. That'd be about the only thing that I could maybe <laughs> some people would say, maybe. Um, but I think once you get to know my dad, he opens up and he's got a whole lot to offer um, in so many ways. So um, I, I just, yeah, feel very fortunate. Um, I think you've earned the respect and admiration of your peers. Um, and I think everyone in this room would say that they benefited very positively from your, uh, you know, from your experiences with you. You've made this club a, an incredibly positive place to be. And I think everyone here uh, would like to, I think, I don't know, I'd like to say that everyone here would, would echo those same sentiments. Um, you know, I've been very lucky to have you in my life and still so many values of hard work and, you know, you know, basically putting so much time and effort into your work. I, I can't tell you in so many ways how many times I think about, you know, a job's not done and so it's done, you know, it's not worth doing and, you know, especially half-assed. That was another one, you know, you got to make sure and get it done. So, so, uh, but, uh, you know, I'll wrap up real quick. Um, Dad, you're an amazing man. Uh, you're an incredible father and someone who I've always looked up to. Uh, you've given me everything a son uh, could ever ask for. Uh, I love you, and I'm so proud to be your son. Uh, I, hope you I hope you realize how much everyone in this room appreciates your contribution and commitment to this club. Uh, congrats on a wonderful career. You've earned every bit of it, and uh, cheers. Thank you, Thomas, and, and I want to say to you and to the entire O'Brien family, um, we are forever grateful for Mike and the sacrifices that he made um, and, and everything he's done for Colonial, and we truly appreciate it. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call on um, Rocky Brooks. For those of you that don't know me, I, my name's Rocky Brooks. I work for Mike for nine, from 1987, October 25th, 1987, to May 5th, 1994. Oh, a little closer, okay. When Ben asked me to speak tonight, I had a million things I wanted to say about Mike. But the one thing I never, ever really get to tell him is thank you. People come into your life and have a dramatic impact on your life. And I'm lucky enough, I have five people that have had this major impact on my life. Two of them let me marry their daughter, Dave and Linda. One of them is my son, Dylan Michael Brooks, who's named after Mike. And the other one is my wife, Debbie, who took over for Mike telling me what to do. <laughs> and the other one is the gentleman we honor tonight. I owe him a debt of gratitude. That I will never be able to repay. He taught me as much about being a man as he did about being a golf professional. Every job I've ever gotten in the golf business is thanks to Mike. I tried to get out of the golf business one time and Mike said no. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I tried to argue with him. He said, you heard what I said. The phone's ringing. Go answer the phone. I turned around and hugged my head and went in and said, answer the phone. He turned and went to his office and didn't say anything. I just said, okay, I'm not getting out of the golf business. A few months later, I get my first head pro job at Meta Greens Country Club in Eden, North Carolina. I called him about 60 days later. I said, can I have my old job back? <laughs> no. I spent a year there and I, Sapona Country Club was looking for a golf profession. Who do you think they called? They called Mike. You got anybody? Yeah, why don't you call Rocky? I spent seven of the longest years of my life at Sapona Country Club. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. In 2002, when Sedgefield Country Club was looking for a head golf professional, the very first, first person they called was Mike O'Brien. They offered him the job. He said, no, I'm not interested in working 70 hours a week again and trying to prove myself all over again. He said, but uh, if you want somebody just like me, why don't you call Rocky? The guy on the phone said, if I thought about Rocky, 
I'd have never called you. <laughs> he said, Mike said, what the hell is that supposed to mean? He said, I can get Rocky a lot cheaper than I get you. <laughs> 13 years later, I'm still at Sexual Country Club, thanks to Mike O'Brien. I can't fully explain everything that Mike taught Jay and I when we work for him, but I can tell you he has a great amount of patience. He had a number of opportunities to raise his voice, and he never did, because Jay and I aggravated him to death. <laughs> and he could have raised his voice a thousand times, and he never did. I don't know how he did it, but he never once raised his voice in the seven years I worked for him, and I gave him a thousand chances to raise his voice. I remember one time in particular, we had just refolded everything in the golf shop. I mean, it was perfect. I had gone down, I went to the cart shed for just a few minutes, probably 10 minutes. I come back up and the golf shop is a mess. And I said, what the hell? I said, has Lou Hill, Lucille Humphrey's been in here and ruined the golf shop again? She was standing on the other side of the fixture. And I was like, oh, sorry, Mrs. Humphreys. I looked over at Mike, who was standing in the doorway of the office, and he just gave me that look. Christian Thomas, I know you've had that look, because I've had it too, and I know Jay has. It's, I, I, I hated that look, but I always got that damn look. Um, Mike would always come in the gosh up and give us these little pearls of wisdom. He would always tell me, he said, you know, it's, never let him see you sweat. I, and I had trouble with that. I would always get so mad about something and he's like, don't let them see you sweat. And he'd tell us, it's not about you, it's about them. As long as you're taking care of your members, you'll be just fine. But he did tell me, Thomas, Christian, he told me a thousand times, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> I guess he thought I talked a lot, which I probably do. There's so many people that Mike has influenced and taught so much from John Hill to Troy Spencer to Chad Wilfong to Marcy Newton to Michael Jackson. There's so many of us, Jay and I, <laughs> we're always kind of paired together. Jay and I were with him and had so much fun together. But I can't thank you enough for what you've done for me and my family. You're as close to a father figure as I'll ever have. Like I told you the other day, I'm, I've always been trying to be Mike O'Brien. Hell, I'm still trying to be Mike O'Brien. I was trying to well. <laughs> you have to talk to Debbie about that one. Um, but uh, I, I will forever. I've been at Central for 13 years, and I'll probably be there for a long time. And I'm, but I am forever going to try to beat Mike O'Brien. Um, thank you for everything. Congratulations on 43 years of being the consummate golf professional. There's not a golf professional in this area that doesn't strive to have the same qualities as Mike. Uh, every time I go somewhere. You've been a role model to me, you've been a father figure to me, and I can't thank you enough for everything. I love you, you mean the world to me. Thank you so very much. Next, I'd like to call on Tony Hill. First of all, I'd like to briefly talk about a little bit about Mike's history from my point of view. <clears throat> in 1979, May of 1979, Johnny Ellington and I joined the club. Little did we know that Mike had been a member here or had came here to the club six months earlier. So our history goes back a long, long way. And when we joined the club, our primary goal was to have fun, which I try to do as best I can. 
So after I'd been a member here for a few years, I had the honor and was asked to serve as president. And I don't know if most of you know much about clubs, but my first concern was if you were going to be a president, what did, for example, other clubs have? Well, all the other clubs that I were aware of that were in the area, when they had a president, not only did they have a golf pro and a, a green superintendent, they had a, what's called a general manager. And the general manager oversaw them. And so I was concerned. Colonial didn't know what a general manager was, which meant that the president was going to be working with them hand in hand, which meant one thing. You had to have a great, a great golf professional and a great green superintendent if you were going to consider serving as president at a country club. And so I served, and that year was a fantastic experience for me getting to know Mike even better, as well as Marty, and to realize how valuable they were to this club. And then later on in the 80s, I was asked to serve president again. And my experience was so well, I volunteered to do it again. And then in 1988, the club had some plans up, and it was going to this, this club house was initially, the initial designs of this plans for this club was to be a two-story building. And they came and they asked me, they said, well, will you serve as president? again, and we don't like that plan. <laughs> now, one thing that was consistent, we still had Mike O'Brien as the golf professional. We still had Marty Stevenson as a green superintendent. But for those two people, I would never have considered it. But it was an honor to work with these two young men because they did their job, and they went beyond the call of duty. So when I took that job, I, little did I know that it was going to be three years in a row being president this time, because they wanted me to be president from the start of the new design club to the completion. So I then took it on. But let me tell you the inner workings that were going on during these three years. We hired Kirkland Construction and we resigned the building. Of course, it was one story, as you see here. But during the course, you don't know the number of times that Marty and Mike would come to me and they say, listen, we've got one, two, three bids for this particular thing to be done in our clubhouse. We had a $2 million budget. What do you think about this? Maybe we can find someone lower. I can remember one instance we had something related to clubhouse, septic or whatever it was, just by their work and our work, $50,000 was saved to club on just this one little instant. And so as a result, they not the loyalty to them was unbelievable because it was a this was a serious thing we wanted to come within budget we wanted to have a good club and we wanted to provide what the, the our, our members needed and at a reasonable cost without their loyalty without that this could have never been done they took pride and that's very important in anything you do they took pride in what they did. That is why today we're sitting here. That is why today this club is successful. And I want to stop right now. I think we need to give Marty as well as Mike a big hand for this. I played golf with Mike and he taught me two valuable lessons. 
playing golf. I never forget after playing golf, and that's one of the reasons I've been improving. <laughs> Some of you might know that. The first one was Mike. Mike told me this. He says, 90% of the golf game is mental, and 10% of the golf game is mental. <laughs> I've learned. I've kept that. But the second one was any, even more valuable. I'd come in. I just I didn't break 100. I came in. I was all frustrated, and thank God for Mike. I looked at Mike and said, Mike, what do you think about my golf game? And Mike looked at me and said, well, Tony, you could have shot better. Uh, next, I'm going to call on Mike O'Brien to see if he has a few words that he wants to say tonight. To say that today and tonight has um, been beyond any expectations that I could have ever had would be a huge understatement. I mean, um, th this is fantastic. The, the turnout for, for golf today w was great, but I really want to, to tell every one of you, first of all, um, a real heartfelt thank you for, for just being here. Um, you've meant so much to me for so long, and um, this is just, this is a great send-off, it really is. Um, a lot of the words that have been spoken here tonight, gosh, I don't know that, I, I don't remember telling a lot of these guys a lot of these things. <laughs> Um, some of the pictures you may have seen, actually I did have hair color other than gray at one time. 1978, end of, it's actually the end of the last week of November, 1st of December, I accepted this position here. And I'll be very honest with you, I, I really expected this to be a temporary job. I had worked for about five years at Bermuda Run as the head golf professional, and I loved the golf course, I loved the members, I loved everything about it except the man that owned the place and the guy I had to work for, the guy I had to answer to. Uh, he provided a great golf course for everybody, would spend anything that was necessary to make sure that we had a great golf course. But the big issue was, and I was working about 80 hours a week, I guess, something like that. It seemed like, he said, son, can't you do a little bit more? Can't you do a little bit more? So if you can work 80, you can work 90, whatever. Uh, so what, it's just, it's just another day. I mean, you know, come on, one more day. Just do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And some of you may have heard the name Bill Satterfield in passing through the years. And again, he, he provided a great product, but he was a very difficult man to work for. So. I realized at that point that, that I had to get, if I wanted to pursue this career path, if I wanted to follow this path, I had to, I had to find another place to do this. Um, so I, I came to Colonial, and as I said, I, I felt like once I, I was offered the job, I accepted. I really felt like it was going to be a temporary position. I, I, I truly felt like I was destined to be at a bigger, not better, but a bigger club anyway. I mean, we only had 200 members maybe when I came here. So I, I really felt like that, that I was going to be here a, a short time. Little did I know that the people here would be as great as you have proven to be. Unbelievable. My wife was working for Hale Van Hoy at the time, who was, some of you old timers may remember him, Hale was the executive director of the Carolinas Golf Association. My wife was the first secretary with the Carolinas Golf Association. Hale, through Linda, obviously <laughs> understood my plight, or our plight, I guess, and said, there's a job open at Colonial Country Club in Thomasville. They're the greatest people in the world. We've had three Carolinas Golf Association senior four balls over there in about the last 15 years. And these people, they turn out, they're just terrific. So I sent a resume in, interviewed, was offered the job, and accepted right away. You folks here, 
you members welcomed us with open arms. It was fantastic. You, you could not have been nicer to me and my family. Um, not only did you allow me to develop a professional relationship with you, a business relationship with you, but you allowed us to develop friendships, personal friendships with you. And not every club in this country can say that, that they allow their golf professional to develop friendships. And I will be forever grateful for all the friendships that not only myself, but my family have been able to carry on throughout all these years. And we really look forward to continuing, obviously, these relationships. And so, uh, again, I, I am forever grateful for that. Um, they told me when I, when I took this job, uh, again, going back to short stay, we, we've got plans for a clubhouse. I said, you know, that's great. That's great. And they, they did. And they built one 12 years later. But, but during those 12 years, I, I, I realized something very quickly, in addition to the fact that how great the, the members were, I, I met Marty Stevenson, obviously, when I came over here, when I interviewed here, took the job. We took the ride around, as, as Marty said, I still remember this. We weren't talking about specific holes and things like that. But very quickly, I realized that we had a golf course superintendent here who wanted this club to be the absolute best that it could be. I mean, you, you, you have limited dollars, everybody has budgets, whatever the case may be, he wanted to do everything in his power to make sure the golf course was as good as it could be. And to this day, this is Colonial Country Club, but it will always be a golf club. But the, the biggest single thing that I could say that has propelled or has allowed this club to continue to grow for all these years is the support of the men and women of the golf program here that enjoy playing golf here. And to each and every one of you, male, female, adults, juniors, seniors, whatever, thank you for your support of golf at Colonial Country Club. I speak for everyone that's in, been involved here. We appreciate it tremendously. So give yourself a round of applause because you are, you are really responsible for what we have out here today. So the, the, the job of a golf professional um, is a very uh, it's a little bit different. It's a varied job. We wear a lot of hats, as Mr. Brooks and any of the other gentlemen in this room that might be in the golf profession can tell you. Um, you, you have to be a lot of things to a lot of people. But one of the charges that we have as a golf professional is to promote the game of golf and develop golfers and teach them the respect for the game that we all know and love. Um, golf can develop character in a person. Occasionally it develops a character or two, but <laughs> it, it can develop character in a person. My father told me when I was very young, he said, son, you, you can learn an awful lot about a man by playing golf with them. And at the time I was, yeah, I know that guy's got some money. Maybe I can beat him out of a couple of bucks here or something. I don't know. But you really can. You learn a lot about people through this great game. And so that, that's really been one of the aspects of, or one of the hats that, that I've tried to wear. I've tried to promote the game of golf and, and teach people that come into the game, be it young or old, that it's, it's a character builder. And obviously if you're a golfer, you know. My, my dad used to tell me, this game would make a preacher cuss. <laughs> and, and, and he's right, he, he really was. But if you learn to respect this game, especially at a, at a young age, it, it teaches you so much about life. And so that's one of the things that I've really tried to do 
in my time here is have a positive effect on the lives of the people that I came in contact, and especially the young people. Um, I, I'm really proud and, and privileged to say that there are a number of you in this room tonight that worked for me perhaps, or just grew up as, as young golfers here. And I am so proud of the persons that you have become, each and every one of you. You are great adults. You are significant contributors to your community, and that is important in life. Again, some of the lessons you may have learned from the golf course, and some of them you may have even gotten from me, and that's, that's wonderful. But I'm so proud to see how the young people coming through this club have developed. And, and one thing I will say to, uh, again, to Rob and all the other officers that are here, you've been so good in allowing these young people unlimited access here. This club has always been great. They take an interest, you take, you, you've taken an interest in the young people that have come through here. You've followed them. If they went on to golf um, professions or, or amateur careers or whatever the case may be, you've supported them. And, and it's really proved to be a, a great environment for young people to, to develop here. I, I feel very good in knowing that a lot of you as parents felt very comfortable in coming out here and dropping your son or daughter off at eight or nine o'clock in the morning, coming back and picking them up at dark and you didn't worry about them out here. <laughs> so. And we had a few. But it, it, this club has been so good about that, allowing myself and anybody that, that worked with me, uh, allowing us the opportunity to try and develop young, young people, character in young people. And there are some of you, again, here tonight, but I, I was thinking when I was making some notes about this, I, I've had people that have worked for me that are doctors, they're, um, there are people that are, um, let's see, what else, law enforcement officers, rather, um, teachers, bankers, any number of occupations, but again, they've proven to be good citizens, wonderful people. And there's some that are still golf professionals, and that really makes me proud. So um, to, to all of you that, that have worked for me, with me, have grown up at Colonial Country Club, I am very, very proud of the person that you have turned out to be. So, as Marty mentioned briefly, anytime you're in the golf industry, be it a golf course superintendent, golf professional, it, it's a different occupation. It's not a Monday through Friday job. It requires weekends and holidays. Um, you sacrifice a lot of time with your family. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a number of my family members here tonight. And right now I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce them all to you here. I'm gonna start on my right. I have Bob Binkley, my brother-in-law, my sister Kathy Binkley, who spoke and told some stories about me tonight. I don't know that I could live up to all this stuff, but <laughs> my sister-in-law, Dale Christensen, my mother and father-in-law, Roy and Priscilla Christensen. My father-in-law, Roy, played golf today. He will be 92 years old in July. And, and he's still playing. I mean, two or three days a week, whatever. Shoot, you break your age? Oh yeah, that's no problem, you know, we can handle it. It's, it's a piece of cake. I'm just waiting on that day. Um, my grandson, Jack Dew. My granddaughter, Avery Dew. 
My, I have another grandson, Walker, do, who is in a baseball game right now, and I think he's on his way. He went extra innings tonight, so he's going to be late. He'll be with his dad, my son-in-law, Mike Duke. I have my daughter, Christian Du, my son, Thomas, and his fiance, Heather Beam. So thank you guys for, for obviously, for your support. You cannot be successful in any profession without support, I think. And obviously, as I said, this, this job requires a lot. It, it tests your patience. Um, obviously, it tested my wife's patience a lot. Late meals. No, no I, got, I know it's a holiday, honey, but I got to work tomorrow. That's, you know, that's just the way it is. Linda tells the story that my first golf job was an assistant golf professional at Tanglewood Park in Clemens. I interviewed for this job. I was offered the job. I took the job. We moved to Clemens. I came home and I said, this is my day off is Thursday. So Linda's thinking, well, gosh, that's great. He's off Thursday. He's off Saturday, Sunday. Gosh, I'm only working four days. That's, that's a pretty good job right there. Well, you know, pretty quickly we realized that was not going to be the case, that I would not be around on Saturday and Sunday. But to my family that has sacrificed so much, I will forever be indebted to all of you, and I love every one of you. So thank you. Um, specifically here. So. Christian, Thomas, Linda. I thank all of you for allowing me the opportunity to pursue this career. Um, I could not have done it without you. I know it's been difficult on all of you, but thank you for supporting me, standing behind me, and seeing me through this. I love you all. Very much. And finally, to Colonial Country Club, thanks for the opportunity to have been able to serve you for just, I don't know, a long time. Anyway, it, it, it's, it's been a great ride, folks, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mike. And I know on behalf of the entire membership, again, to you and your family, we appreciate the sacrifice that you made and everything that you've done for Colonial Country Club. We truly, truly appreciate it. And we hope after dinner tonight that we'll have a few things to um, show you that we truly appreciate you. Thank you, Mike. And let's enjoy dinner now. So. Great golf tournament. Um, I've heard nothing but positives uh, about the day.